What's up everybody? I'm back. I'm making another video. This one is about depression. Well, we shouldn't be afraid of depression. At one time, you know, back in, uh, say, middle school, going to high school, you know, my freshman year, I was going to be an adult, you know, from uh, just learning how to play football and then, you know, thinking about having to play football with older people, you know, some, some you know, guys look like men and shit. And I was just kind of depressed, you know, because I was very athletic. You know, I'm not talking about depression just, you know, because you're not good enough for something. You know, there's also depression like when your family doesn't take care of you, when you don't have family at all, you have to call your grandma, your grandpa, your aunt, your uncle, someone else, you know, your family or a foster parent, you know. And if everything, everybody can tell you, you know, you're going to be happy, you're doing fine, you can make it. But there's always that literally, literally see that tells you, you can become depressed. And I felt that at that time, you know, me also knowing that there was going to be dates, you know, out there that I had to try to convince myself that I could feel like I needed to be loved by another woman, right? Like besides my mom, my sister, and my cousins, my aunts, you know? And that kind of bugged me, you know, with the, I don't want to call it competition, but you know, everybody has a little bit of something else. And then there's the women that choose how you are. And then, you know, that, that kind of like depresses, you know, especially going to high school, you know, middle school. I was in a small middle school. It wasn't too big, you know, but I already had my ups and downs in my relationships, you know. Uh, then, then not just that, you know, my parents, they went through a divorce, you know, and this older, older woman was trying to convince us that she was a better off person, you know, quote, like, I'm your mom, you know. And it, it, was, it was very tough for me. It was tough for her children. Because my dad took us all in. Uh, he was trying to take care of my older sister, my younger brother. And she had two other sons, you know. And this is, to be, in fact, you know, I'm just giving you my rundown of what my life was. And basically, that's it. I mean, besides that, I, I want to talk about depression. You know, how do we solve the problem, you know? What I learned from my experience when I was learning about depression because if I didn't know what the definition of depression then it would have not hit me you know I would have just said I I, I I can cope with that I can live like that for the rest of my life and a lot of people will live like that and then when you bring up to them hey you have depression or you have a, an addiction or you might have um, psychological problems but really do it they, they don't, like the people that are telling them, was they read it, you know, they read it. And they had someone tell them about these symptoms, you know. But I'm going to tell you all one thing. I have God, you know, and I've, I've met God since I've been a young youth, you know. If it was Catholic, Christian, Methodist, Baptist, uh, Buddhism, I always knew there was a higher power that can help me out, you know. Um... But depression, you know, how do we solve it? You, it could be God, but it's it's very difficult to have God intercede into a conversation when nobody's believing in faith. When you don't have faith, it doesn't work. So I'm not going to make this about God. I, I want to make this study about how we solve it. Okay? So... Let's say you read the Bible, right? Or let's say you read some literature or you're in a classroom or you're with a bunch of classmates or even at home and everybody's talking about a certain subject. Well, or you're watching a video like my daughter. She's watching a video. She quickly, she's only three years old and she will start believing that could be real, right? Or let's say something is happening 
at her house or at, at your house and you're taking this in, you know, you, the vibe, the, the scenery, what is going on, and you're taking this in. So you're learning from the situation that's gonna happen later on because of the mood and the setting that is being portrayed into your eyes. And this is what, this is what you this is what happens to you before you have literature. Okay, before you were told that that was wrong or that's not the way things should be. Okay, now uh, if the conversation is right, if the conversation is approached correctly by the group or by the individual summoning that, let's say, spirit or let's say the symptom. If the knowledge is right, then you're going to go home or you're going to leave the interaction correctly. You're going to go, you're going to leave with the interaction with your head held up high or let's move on. But like they say, talk is cheap and the walk gets better, right? The, something like that. So, um, let's begin to, to where I was getting taught, you know, different things, you know, about my life and about how successful I really want to be. And all the, let's say, addictions that I had, which it was either believing that I'm going to be sick, that I, that in marriage, there's life till death, to sickness, till poor. Oh my God, you know, like the vowels can change. People's vowels can really change what you, what you're teaching these kids, you know, you know, what we teach each other, you know, we really have to be direct. And look at this beautiful picture right here of the cross of God. Look at that, look at that halo. That's a halo right there. Halo full of spikes. You know what, Jesus Christ carried that halo. All right, and Jesus Christ is not a baby anymore, by the way, Jesus Christ is a man. You know, he's a man and he, he ain't messing around anymore, right? So, let's, let's get into conversations that we wanna be about, you know, have conversations with people and when the time is right, you know, don't be afraid to voice yourself that, hey, I don't need that kind of conservative uh, mannerism um, at this time, or I'm not ready for that, you know, because that's where it starts. When you start telling yourself that you believe in a, in a better future because that's what we have. We have a future. Even though you come from a bad background or you come from an unexistence background that you don't know exactly where you're from. Okay? I'm not talking about racism, but if you were Mexican and you came from a, a house that was like uh, shielding the weather with plastic, you know, um, and if you, you, you like that because it was always hot in Mexico, so why would it even be wrong to have a little bit of rain, you know, drip, because we can't run away from the rain, so how are you going to tell someone that lives in the forest that, that their, their ways of living is wrong, right? So you are trying to teach someone about poverty, but they come from uh, a beautiful forest, jungle-like, you know, beach. I mean, so, you know, you, 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 you want to tell them that they should be rich. Or you're going to bring uh, depression. Or you're going to bring sadness onto them. Or you can even just bring confusion, which would then bring jealousy. So we got to be careful because it's not always depression. It can it, it sometimes mean jealousy. But, uh, you know, I, I'll get more in, into this about how we're going to deal with depression. You know, how I've dealt with depression. How I've made myself wiser in choosing how I was before I, I got depressed. 
okay because if you're not sick like like let's say uh, you know how we care for our our, li our living brothers and sisters and they have defects side effects let's say and I don't want to say because we are bad blood nobody's bad blood okay and we're all created the same and we should love each other the same but there's some of us that not only have long-term memory but they don't also remember their short-term memory right um, but it is never gonna that's never gonna change besides that we weren't here to get depressed about it but we were here to create an influence for a belonging for that kind of culture because it was a culture many many years ago when they used to be called cavemen come on i mean i'm i'm very like open-minded right and at, when there was a caveman there had to be some kind of scientist not unless it was a excuse my language another caveman teaching another caveman and eventually we slowly moved no it was someone that was very smart you know someone that like I want to say one time I, I, I told a story to my mom to my wife about a biblical story back you know in the, when the Bible started you know his name is Moses you know he split the seas you know uh, that's it's very biblical right but I want to. I want to. I want to continue this about how we shouldn't be afraid of living life, and we should give a token and thanks to the real God and not evil. Stay away from evil as much as you can, because that's what's gonna make us go. That's what's gonna make us go to better lanes, to better heights, to to a better life for your brothers and sisters. Alright, I'll get back to y'all as soon as I can.